Hello, my sweet friends. Welcome back. We have a friend. What are you eating? Pom here. Give it to me. Where did you get that? He's eating a pom pom. Cool, cool, cool. We're gonna do a book haul today because I haven't done one in a while. And as I was preparing to do this video, I was like, okay, I'll go through my shelves, get all the books that I've bought or received or whatever in the last few months and obviously show them in a book haul. I did not expect to be showing so many books today. I don't know how this happened. I was on a book buying ban in December. How? I don't know. I don't know. Some of these I've bought, some of them I've received, some of them were gifts, some of them were thrifted, some of them are from publishers and authors. And so I'm just gonna go through all of them today. And since this is a bit of like a collective haul, like these are books from the last few months, I thought it would be fun as I go through the books. I could also tell you whether I've read the book or not. So out of all of the books I've acquired, how many have I actually read so far? I guess we will find out. So the first little pile of books that I have are The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. In the second half of last year, I read The Renegades Trilogy and I loved it. It is YA sci-fi and it's about a bunch of superheroes. It's so fun, so fast paced. It's one of those books where you're reading it and the pages just fly by. Like I loved it so much. And after reading that, a lot of people were like, if you liked Renegades, you should read The Lunar Chronicles, which is another YA sci-fi series by Marissa Meyer. So I was like, say less of course so first of all i was responsible and i just got the first book the first book is called cinder and all of the books in this series are like fairy tale reimaginings so this is a reimagining of cinderella and it follows a cyborg called cinder and it's just such a fun story it's also quite short and it was just like so easy to fly through i just really really enjoyed my reading experience and so after that i decided to read the rest of them but this was during december so i was on a book buying ban so i read the rest of them through my library but then i loved them so much that I wanted to get my own copy so I ended up buying the next three books in the series which can we also say I read them as ebooks from my library and I didn't realize how big they were especially because Cinder is quite small and then when I got the rest of them in the mail I was like I read those like no wonder the last one took me a while I just finished this one this month I started it in December didn't finish it till January because obviously she's quite thick but this is the rest of the series I also just love how they look together I think they're such beautiful spines so of course we have book one which I just talked about book two is is called Scarlet and it's a Red Riding Hood reimagining. Book three is called Cress and this is a Rapunzel reimagining. And book four is called Winter and this is a Snow White reimagining. They definitely feel very YA. So if you don't like YA, I don't think you'll like these, but these are the first books I picked up and I have read all of these. So that is a great way to start off this haul. Got a little sploot going on. Next up we have Betting On You by Lynn Painter. This is her newest YA romance. I definitely prefer her YA romances over her adult romances. I just think she is, she is just like made for writing YA romances. I loved Better Than The Movies. I really enjoyed the do-over and I'm really intrigued to see how this one goes. I haven't read it yet. So this is in the to read pile, but I'm hoping I get to it soon because I feel like a YA rom-com is just like the perfect palette cleanser, perfect after a fantasy or just like a bigger book in general. The font is also a great size. Maybe we'll do two separate piles. One for books that I have read and one for books that I haven't read yet. I don't know if this is going to make me feel terrible or really proud of myself, so I guess we'll, we'll see. Next up, I also got myself the special edition of Archer's Voice. I read Archer's Voice for the first time in 2021 and it quickly became one of my favorite books. I feel like it's one of those books where you're just like, this is why I love reading. Like, I just felt so deeply connected to the characters in this story and just, yeah, truly fell in love with the characters and with the story. It's a really, like, emotional, heart-wrenching story but it's just like full of such beautiful moments I love Archer I love Brie I love them together and I just love the way this story is written I feel like this is like a crowd pleaser like a lot of my friends when they start getting into reading I'm like please read Archer's voice like any friend that I have who's getting into reading I'm like you have to read Archer's voice and so far all of the friends that I've recommended it to have loved it so we're like a hundred percent success rate so far I know that not everyone obviously loves this book but it seems like a lot of people do so if you haven't read it yet I really really recommend it but why I wanted to get this one specifically is because this is the annotated special edition so the author has gone through and written notes on pretty much every page it looks like of just like thoughts that she had either while writing it or just like thoughts that she has about the characters or about these scenes. Like as an example here, she's written, my husband who is a police officer always helps me with even short scenes like this where I wanna make sure I get the details right because one of the characters in this story is a police officer. So she's obviously asking him questions about that. Just like little tiny things that will make the reading experience a little bit more special and like see where ideas came from and just thoughts that she has as the author. Like I'm always so intrigued to see what the author thinks about the books that they write. Like, 
obviously I'm sure that they're really proud of their work, but like, especially many years after writing it, because Archer's voice isn't very new. Like it's been out for quite a few years now. So like, what thoughts does she have now upon reflection? But I also just think it's such a beautiful physical book as well. I think I actually prefer it without the dust jacket on. I've been displaying it on my shelf just as the naked hardback because I love the gold foiling. I'm not sure how I feel about the red sprayed edges. Um, I think I would have preferred like a blue or a gold or something, but it's not awful. It's just like, I'm, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting design choice. Maybe there's a reason for it that I don't know. I'm unsure, but obviously this is another one that I have read. So we can put that on the red pile. Next up, we have Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I read my first Brando Sander last year and I'm hoping to read quite a few more this year. And a lot of people messaged me recommending this book once I started reading sci-fi. This is YA sci-fi. I'm very excited to read it. It's on my 24 books to read in 2024. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get to it this year. Like I'm pretty, pretty sure. Another one on my 24 books I wanna read in 2024 is this one. This is really good actually by Monica I see. I could be wrong with that pronunciation, but I want to read a little bit more literary and just like general fiction this year. We'll see if I do, but this is one of those books that I've just seen everywhere. I remember when it first came out, I saw the cover everywhere and I was like, I am so intrigued by this book. It looks incredible. And one of my friends on Instagram, Tegan, she reads a lot of literary fiction and this is one of her favorites and that just got me so intrigued. I feel like I take a lot of her recommendations when it comes to like literary fiction, general fiction, just like those genres that I don't typically read a lot of. It seems like it's about a girl whose marriage just ended and it seems like she's just like navigating life as a recent and young divorcee so again I haven't read this yet but hopefully I will sometime pretty soon another one that I haven't read yet is called Flower Heart by Catherine Bakewell this one came as a recommendation from one of you guys after I talked on a vlog about how I want to read more books that talk about flowers because I read a few last year and they just intrigued me so much I don't know why but I love the the incorporation of flowers into books and I find the language of flowers and the descriptions of flowers and the symbolism of flowers just such a beautiful thing in books and I just find it fascinating and I was kind of like if anyone has any recommendations for books that you think might be up my alley based on that please let me know and someone said you need to read Flower Heart and I was like I've never heard of this book let me look it up and it just sounds so beautiful and so fun Clara's magic has always been wild but it's never been dangerous then a simple touch causes poisonous flowers to bloom in her father's chest the only way to heal him is to cast an extremely difficult spell that requires perfect control and the only person willing to help her is her former best friend Xavier who's grown from a sweet shy child into a mysterious and distant young man it's giving morally gray and I'm down for it. Xavier asks for a terrible price in return, knowing Clara will give almost anything to save her father. As she struggles to reconcile the new Xavier with the boy she once loved, she discovers their bargain is only one of the heavy secrets he's hiding. And as she hunts for the truth, she instead finds the root of a terrible darkness that's taken hold of the queendom, a darkness only Clara's magic is powerful enough to stop. So it's giving romance, it's giving family dynamics, it's giving flowers, magic, secrets, politics, saving the queendom like sign me up say less like it's beautiful I can't wait to read this I hope I literally love it so much but I'll obviously let you guys know when I pick it up and what I think of it the most recent book purchase I made is this one I actually just got this in the mail I think yesterday but I bought this immediately after watching Bestie Haley's newest video where she read a bunch of books and this was her favorite in that vlog I think it's like magical realism or something like that it just looks really cozy and if one of my friends rates something really highly like of course I'm going to get it and read it another one to the I haven't read this pile. I also have two more books that I bought recently. I'm just going to show these quickly because I talked about them in a recent vlog, but I got the second book in the Emily Wilde trilogy. It's called Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands and it's just like honestly the most beautiful cover. I'm obsessed. These books are just like me to a T. Cozy fantasy, not a lot of plot, a little bit of romance, just like a cozy fun time. I think if you don't like like not a lot going on in a book, you're not going to like these, but I do. I love a cozy just chill time hanging out with characters that I really like and that is what these books are so I'm very excited to pick this up and of course we have Ruthless Vows I'm shocked that I haven't read this yet I need to get onto it ASAP this is the sequel to Divine Rivals and Divine Rivals ended on such a cliffhanger like I can't believe I haven't picked up this book yet but I said this in my vlog I've been feeling very slumpy and I'm scared that if I pick this up while I'm feeling slumpy I'm not gonna love it as much as I could if I'm just like enjoying books more because right now I'm just like 
not loving anything and I don't want to ruin my reading experience. So I'm going to wait until I'm in the perfect mood for this and then I'll probably binge it very, very quickly. The next one I also showed in a recent vlog, so I'll quickly show this one as well. This is my second copy of Divine Rivals. I have the trade paperback, which is like what we get in Australia, but I also really loved the US hardcover, so I decided to purchase this one as well. And the main reason why I got this, well, first of all, is because I am obsessed with the book. Like, I love this book so much. I think it was in my top 10 favorite books from last year. But I also want to display it on my bookshelf as a naked hardcover because I am just so obsessed with the typewriter design that's on the naked hardcover. I don't really care too much for the front cover. Like, it's fine. I don't think it's anything special. But this, like, why didn't they make this the front cover? Because this is beautiful and so sweet and it just says dear iris and i'm pretty sure that if you buy the second book in the u.s hardcover it is like a blue naked hardcover i think i could be getting the details wrong but it has like the same typewriter design but it says dear rowan so do i need that i'm gonna read it and then decide if i love the second book as much as i love the first one then yes i will buy the u.s hardcover of the second book as well but i'm trying not to be too impulsive so we'll wait and see another very recent addition to my library is this little box set that I found at a little secondhand bookshop. If you're ever in Caloundra on the Sunshine Coast, please go to the book bucket. It's a secondhand bookstore. Every single time I'm in Caloundra, I am like, Liam, we have to go to the book bucket. It's my favorite place. They don't always have like the best books in the world, but it is so fun searching through what they do have. And I have found so many hidden gems there. If you just like are willing to look hard enough and if you obviously just get lucky. And this time I was able to find a box set of books by Francine Rivers for $15. So three books for $15. $15 is pretty incredible. I don't know too much about this series, but I sent a photo to my mom and she's like, you need to buy those right now. I think she might have read these ones. My mom loves Francine Rivers, as do I. She's read a lot more of her books than I have, but Francine Rivers is a Christian fiction author and I really love the ones that I have read by her so far. And pretty much all of the Francine Rivers books that I've got have come from thrift stores, but this is the Mark of the Lion trilogy. So I'm intrigued to read it. I don't know what it's about at all, but unfortunately I haven't read any of these yet so they're making my have not yet read pile quite large. Luckily, the next books I'm going to show you, I have read. I can't remember if I've shown these. I think I've definitely shown them in my bookshelf tour because I've had them for a little while now, but they are kind of like my prized possessions. So I had to show you guys as well, but these are my UK hardcover versions of the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I'm obsessed with these. They're probably like my favorite books that I own potentially, maybe aside from my indie published Magnolia Parks. I just think they are some of the most beautiful books in the world so I just wanted to show them off once again but we have the first book Once Upon a Broken Heart with the blue spine and this is what the naked hardcover looks like and these are not special editions like these are just the normal ones that you would get at like any bookstore and they're this beautiful insane and this one is signed by the author I don't know if it's a digital signature or if it's a hand-drawn signature but it's signed and that is crazy to me I didn't know it was signed when I bought it because I just got it from Amazon and then it showed up and I was like sorry then we have the ballad of never after which is like my favorite book in the series in terms of like the storyline but i also love the pink spine i think this is my favorite spine but i think the third one is like my favorite cover but this is absolutely gorgeous and then the naked hardcover absolutely divine like so beautiful i'm obsessed and then this is the third book like i said i think this is my favorite like front cover i just love the colors they chose and like the designs in general and then the naked hardcover like you're actually kidding it has the apple if you know, you know. We love to see it. I just, I think this is so beautiful as well. Like I actually can't get over it. And these books just mean so much to me. So I have read all of these, which is very nice for my pile here. And then something that I, like I actually can't believe that I own is this. I still like every time I see this on my shelf, I'm like, what? Like I actually could cry if I think about it too much, but this is a gift from the most beautiful follower of mine, Sophia, if you're watching. My actual heart is so full because of you. She asked if she could send me this and I was like, you're kidding. It's the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of A Curse for True Love, which obviously we don't have Barnes & Noble here and like, we can get books, I think, maybe online, I don't really know, but it's just, it's really hard. So for her to send this to me, I just like couldn't believe it when I got the message being like, would you like me to send this to you? And I was like, you're joking. And not only that, she had to go one step further 
and she got this signed for me. Like, not just signed, like signed for me. For Rachel, Stephanie Garber. She, like, Stephanie Garber held this book, wrote for Rachel, signed Stephanie Garber. And Sophia did that for me. Like, she waited in line at this, like, meetup, and she got this book signed for me on the other side of the world. And that's the other thing, like we don't get like meetups like this here in Australia very often at all. I have never been able to go to like a meetup where I can get something like signed by my favorite author. So this is just like my actual prized possession. I just can't believe it. So a huge thank you to Sophia. She is the sweetest human alive. She sent me the most beautiful letter. I may have cried reading it. And I just can't believe that you guys are out there like as actual humans and you feel like my real friends even though i've never met you i'm just so thankful for like friendships and for the people that the internet has connected me with like i i still can't believe it so i do own this i do actually have this in my hands right now yep anyway moving on lastly we have some books that were gifts either from friends or publishers or authors the first one we have here is actually our current book club read with my friends so soph chose this as our january book club pick and so she bought a copy for everyone which was so sweet of her thank you so much somi but i am currently reading this at the moment that's why it's got a bookmark in it but this is actually a non-fiction book which i'm really excited about because we haven't done a non-fiction book in our book club yet and i think it'll be such an interesting discussion because this book is called the book you want everyone you love to read and it's written by a psychotherapist and it's all about relationships and just like interacting with people and how you might kind of view relationships differently to other people and how you can kind of go about things in a healthier way it's very interesting i'm not even halfway yet so i obviously haven't read that much yet but i'm enjoying it so far and i'm finding it very interesting and i am especially excited for the discussion that we're going to have in book club from this book oh i guess i'll have to put that in the haven't read yet pile even though i've started it another package that i received in december and was absolutely like shocked when i opened it up was a package from an author by the name of Catherine Cowles. I still can't believe that she herself sent this to me. I had no idea it was coming and then I opened it and I was like huh? But a few months ago I read a book on my Kindle called Tattered Stars and I really enjoyed it. I think I read it at like four stars. It was a small town romance book that's part of an interconnected standalone series which is one of my favorite things in the world. Like small town romances that are part of like interconnected standalone series are uh, my kryptonite. I do love them. And so when I opened the package to the entire series from the author herself, I was like, what? Like, like, how did this happen? I'm honestly still unsure about that, but I was so excited because first of all, these covers are just so beautiful. We have the first book, Tattered Stars. Second book, which is called Falling Embers, Hidden Waters, Shattered Sea. And then the last book, which is Fractured Sky. Like they're all just such beautiful covers. And she also just sent such a lovely note, which is always just like, when you get like handwritten notes from people, it's always just so sweet. And then I also found out that she has signed every single one of these books. So all of these are signed by the author, which I freaked out over. So very excited to have these in my hands. So when I received the package, I'd already read the first one. And then in December, I read the second book. I am currently in the middle of the third book. So I have like two and a half books to go. And I've just really, really been loving this series. They're all just like short stories, pretty emotional. And they also all so far have had like a suspense element to them, which I love in my small town romance series. So I think if you like the Edens or if you like Devney Perry in general, I would definitely recommend checking out this series because I think you would really enjoy. But I still need to check out the rest of her books because now after reading a few of these, I'm like, okay, I'm hooked. I need to check out the rest of her backlist. So I've read two, still have three more to go. Okay, we're literally like even on each pile right now. The next one, again, is like literally so exciting. Like I get probably like too excited over books, but I just can't believe it sometimes when I open these packages, like especially when I don't know they're coming, is like crazy. Like I always freak out. And this next book is one of those times because I didn't know this was coming. I didn't know this was being sent to me. All of the rest of the books that I'm gonna show you are from publishers and most of the books that I'm showing you are from Hachette. Hachette is just so generous to me and I'm very very thankful for all of the books that I get sent from authors from publishers from you guys from anyone and this next one was just a very exciting package because this is an arc of bride by Ali Hazelwood and not only is it an arc but it is a special edition arc which is 
I was just not expecting to get this at all. So when I opened this like the other week, I freaked out. This one comes out in early February. So I need to read this like ASAP. But it says on the back, a dangerous alliance between a vampire bride and an alpha werewolf becomes a love deep enough to sink your teeth into. I am very intrigued to read this because obviously so far, Ali Hazelwood has only done like contemporary stuff. And I guess this is kind of like dipping her toes into fantasy. I don't know what to expect with this, but I'm intrigued. And I've literally loved everything Ali Hazelwood has written so far. I think Check and Mate is honestly my favorite by her. And so to read something just like brand new, I'm very intrigued. Very, very intrigued. Like, I am a little bit scared. I don't know how I feel about like vampire werewolf romances. I don't know if I've ever read any. I've never read Twilight or like anything like that. So we'll see. But the fact that I have this beautiful addition to display, like I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. Hardcover so beautiful. I was also so excited when I opened these. I got sent Saving Six and Redeeming Six by Chloe Walsh. These have recently been traditionally published here in Australia by Hachette and last year I ended up reading Binding and Keeping 13 and I loved them way more than I thought I was going to and so I'm so excited to continue the series. I haven't yet but I can't wait. Okay this is I'm not feeling as good as I was before. I was also sent a copy of Never by Jessa Hastings. And obviously there's been like mixed feedback about this book and I myself have given my thoughts on this. I think I talked about it in my December wrap up. So you can go to that video if you really wanna hear like my in-depth thoughts cause I really chatted for a while about it. But I will say if anything, this book, like this cover is beautiful so i'm very very happy that i have my hands on a physical copy of this it looks stunning on my jessa hastings shelf if i do say so myself and the fact that jessa hastings like gets her best friend to do the covers of her books like all of the original covers were done by her best friend that is so special to me like that just makes me feel so warm and fuzzy inside and the fact that her best friend like painted this you're kidding, that's insane. And more importantly, we have another new release coming from Jessa Hastings in just literally under a month. Like I am counting down the days until Magnolia parks into the dark, like literally. You're kidding. You're telling me that in the next month, we're getting a new Sarah J Mass book and a new Jessa Hastings book. Like actually shut up. Actually, shut up. I can't wait. And the last book that I have to haul is The Boyfriend Candidate by Ashley Winstead. As a shy school librarian, Alexa Stone is comfortable keeping out of the spotlight, but when she's dumped for being too meek, she decides she needs to change. And what better way to kickstart her new, more adventurous life than with her first one night stand? And I think the one night stand ends up being someone like famous, like a famous politician, it sounds like. And now this is a scandal. So it sounds like there's like a fake dating situation situation in order to overcome this scandal. It sounds really fun. I'm sure it would be like a perfect like rom-com palette cleanser for in between some like more heavy books. So I'm excited, but I haven't read that one yet either. <laughs> this is not looking good for me. The taller palette are the ones that I haven't read yet. The shorter pile are the ones that I have read. So it looks like I have my work cut out for me, but my goal this year is to really work on my physical TBR. And so far, so good, honestly. I mean, I definitely have acquired some new books, as you can see. At least we're reading them too. Like, it's not like I haven't read any of these. So we'll take that as a win. A win is a win. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little book haul. I think it's really fun to do these every few months and kind of just share with you all of the books that I have somehow acquired over the last few months. I'm hoping that I won't have too many of these this year because like I said I'm trying to read the books that I already own but I'm sure some shopping will be done let's let's be honest but let me know if you've purchased any books so far this year and if so what have they been and if you think I need to read them let me know maybe I'll somehow get my hands on them hopefully from the library maybe not buy the physical copy we'll see <laughs> but I love you guys so so much and I will see you in my next video very soon goodbye